All right, here we go. Where, uh, where is this guy? Ah, oh, friend. My expression wasn't much better than yours when I first saw this. I definitely want to punch this guy in the face. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. It's her. The famous singer, Robin. Well, first of all, can I just say that this had nothing to do with me? I'm just an unlucky bystander here. The family can testify for me. If you don't believe me, just ask anyone in the Bloodhound family. They hate me, and they hate the IPC. So they'd never lie. Man, this guy just has one of those faces I just want to punch. This is not where the crime happened. What I showed you was a memory. The most basic light cone manifesting tech. Authorized by the Garden of Recollection and owned by the IPC. Did you really think the Galaxy Rangers were outsiders this whole time? Panacone has made a solemn commitment to protect the safety of anyone inside a family dream. Any person in distress will be forcibly awakened and safely returned to reality. What gives them the confidence to make such conclusive statements? Because behind this promise is the harmony. The family's Dreamweavers link up their minds together to construct an unbreakable defensive line. Breaking through this line of defense to create death in the dreamscape. <laughs> Not even a memo keeper could do that without the family's permission. Who could have done it, friend? The only one is her. The girl who calls herself a Galaxy Ranger. An imposter. An unsought guest. An emanator who hides her true identity. I don't believe you in the least bit. In the least bit. Ifrit's death was a foregone conclusion. And Robin? Her misfortune was staring right at her. Who will be the next to die? Uh, you. You. You will be the next guy. I'm gonna guarantee that. It's fine. Listen to your gut. Building trust always takes time. And I'm willing to wait. I just hope you realize that wherever that legacy is concerned, covert plans are already underway throughout Panacone. Everyone's got their own agenda. Careful you don't get stuck on the wrong side. If I were you, I'd keep my distance from Acheron. After all, any schemes out in the open are always going to be better than a monster in the shadows. Right? Mm. Yeah, Who's to me... say there isn't an even deeper conspiracy lurking beneath the surface? Memo Keeper, I think our little deal is finished. Aventurine is telling the truth. This memory is a real one, and there's no sign of any distortion grafting on. The IPC is not the Garden, and there are real limits to what they can actually do. But you know all this. Friend, let's not beat around the bush here. The thing is, I want to reach out personally to team up with the Astro no. Express. Screw you. Get lost. I told you, I'm just not interested in scrambling for the legacy. I just came to Pentagony for work. I'm here to retrieve some lost property through? for the IPC, if you catch my drift. I'm talking ownership of this frontier prison. This has all become a bad debt thanks to the cancer of all worlds. The IPC has tried sitting down for negotiations time and again, but the family wouldn't even take our call. You have no idea how difficult these people are to deal with. Put it this way. They've hushed up the existence of death before, so they can definitely cover up any news about Robin's death. It'll just quietly float off like a bubble and pop. Nobody ever being the wiser. That's not fair, right? So then, friend, I need your help. 
I can't trust That's you. That's fine. Least, I'm not forcing you. But I'm really not asking for much, so why don't you at least hear me out, oh, yeah. okay? Start falling. I have but only one goal. The family's front door is like a high wall. An and to tear the whole thing down, I'll have to dig out a few chunks first. Once I find a weak point, the IPC will have plenty of means. Now we have our chance. So long as we can get to the truth behind her death, we can have justice for Robin. <laughs> While also gaining a valuable bargaining chip for bringing the family to the table. Truly a once in a blue moon opportunity. I've been investigating and making lots of friends all okay, over Pentagoni precisely for this very moment. This tragic news would be extremely bad for the family. So they'll be doing everything they can to stop it. All right, there we go. Especially to the IPC. Yeah, want it there But I trust that there are still a few factions that remain exceptions. And that's why I need you all. That's strange. The reputation of the Astral Express precedes you. And the Harmony will give you the fairest of appraisals. You get to find out really what happened and seek justice. And I get to put it toward completing my mission for the IPC. Okay. Hey, thanks it's for following Emma David. Win-win situation. <laughs> I wear Ramparos. Look at the stream. Wait right there. Yeah, so let's see if that works. I'm gonna make Don't worry, decision. just head back and talk things over with your companions. I don't that navigator you. is really smart. She must understand the value of this deal. Look, here's my contact details. If you come to any conclusions, call me. Oh, and take this. A thorough investigation can always use. No, I don't need anything funding. for art. Don't mention it. So long, friend. I really am looking forward to uncovering the truth about death with everyone. Aventurine just sauntered off. He really doesn't mean to force it, but something still seems off. I wouldn't trust him with a fork. What are your plans? Black Swan. What is she thinking? Speak with Black Swan. On the surface, this yeah, doesn't for look out, like but, you a know, bad deal for you. Not something I'm looking for but right now. But Aventurine is a shrewd merchant whose scheme won't just be as simple as it appears to be. He doesn't know about Miss Firefly yet, but judging by your reaction, he may have noticed something going on and deliberately shifted topics to the truth of death to try and pull you in line with his way of thinking. That's quick thinking, and very sound logic. Aventurine is no fool, and working with him definitely has its dangers. That is something I agree on. Anyway, be careful out there. There's more than one way to blaze a trail. 
in a dark forest beset by wolves, ensuring your own escape to safety should be your primary concern. As for the other questions... I'm not sure the two cases were committed by the same culprit, but that massive wound looked like its winged blade. We've all witnessed it in action before. Plus, it seems unlikely that there would be two lethal entities loose in the dreamscape. Sorry, I can't answer that question. That ranger is shrouded in mystery. I'm afraid no one is capable of providing an answer. But, without a doubt, she is the most special guest at this banquet. It's like Aventurine said just then. It's best to keep your distance from her. Two victims appearing one after the other in a very short time span, in and of itself, that's very unusual. Two possibilities. The collapse of Penacone's dreamscape has started speeding up, making death extremely agitated and weakening the family's protections. Or, everything has been planned out and executed by someone. If someone has chosen these victims deliberately, first a smuggler, then a family celebrity, then this murderer's motives are worth thoroughly chewing over. A smuggler? Firefly is a smuggler? Wasn't she a refugee? It's all happened so quickly, I can only or make a conjecture. After leaving here, go have a chat with your companions. I hope you can clarify the source of this confusion. Come, this way. It's a short walk. Don't get lost. Is there another way, time gate? <laughs> this is where we part ways. All of this is like a nightmare. Unfortunately, the are reaching characters doesn't you can't, lie. Our enemies you can't what beat. we just saw is the reality that happened. And it won't fade from our minds just because we wake up. But follow your heart and don't be afraid. We all walk through this world casting shadows of different lengths. And ultimately, all we leave behind are precious memories. Ah, hold on just a sec. Oh, I don't think I have the right team for this. I mean, technically it's a great team. But... There you go. A small parting <laughs> gift. If one day you unfortunately fall into the deep waters of the memory zone, and there's no memo keeper to join you, hopefully it can guide you on my behalf. I also pay great attention to the ways of the world. Just think of this as an apology from me for hiding something from you. I don't know why my box does that every so often. Then I have something private to take care of regarding that Galaxy Ranger. Let's leave things there, shall we? What fascinating memories will you bring for me next time we meet? I sincerely look forward to them. Her booty shorts just look odd on her character. It really bothers me. I don't know why. Anyways, greetings and salutations, Mad Wookie. Welcome to the stream. Lise, you still at the hotel? Lise, Lise, yo, you're in trouble. You got separated. Still fancy help. March State Cop. Do I need help? Not. Nah. Let me know. The hotel's really calm, not much happening. I'm done. That lady didn't do any bad. Like, 
I trust um Black Swan reasonably. Lucky statue. A family rep. Is Himiko okay? All right. If I had weld, I'd probably replace him right now. If I don't have weld. Main story, you gotta play with the story team. So much has happened. I should take a moment to gather my thoughts and wait for everyone to arrive. Some time ago. Late now, Ranger. Do you still dream, Hunter? Of those slain by your hand? Akron killed him? We're still alive. As are you. We still have room to make a choice. Leave the music box behind. And then go. Choice. The bloody trail of the destruction leaves no room for hesitation. The Taurus Fire Demon. Even if you sacrifice your life for that eon. You won't get special treatment. Ranger, you tread the narrow path of the hunt. You could never understand. We come from the fire and are born bathed in fire. We spread, burn, and destroy until all the kindling has burned out and we leave only ashes on the ground. Burning forms the entire life of a fire demon. From the beginning to the end. We are born to die just to put into practice a profile of another universal truth. All things are created for the destruction. Your companions don't seem to think so. They fight for your chance at survival. They are my children, and just as I was, they are flames that have yet to burn my heart. They're still young, and I don't believe them. But I am kind of sad that this guy died off screen. <laughs> and time is running out. Can you see the planet of festivities in the distance? I plan to bring purgatory with me there. And before that, I must surpass you. Why? Because on the path they have forged, you have traveled farther than I have. Emanator. Emanator, what? <sighs> oh, what does that word mean? You cannot hide your true identity. Draw that sword. For we shall indeed remain here, bound to fight a decisive battle to the death. For I choose this. Destruction is intense, but brief. 
To cravenly cling to life is to endure an endlessly prolonged existence. Even if the answer turns out to be your own destruction? What is important is not the answer, but that it exists just as you exist. Everything exists to be destroyed. Emanators are no different. Just as even sweet dreams may be born of the void, the so-called impossible oh, okay. there is something that is yet to happen. <sighs> All right. I accept. You shall witness the most brilliant and intense fire in existence. May this flame illuminate the farthest reaches of your bottomless dream. I have no idea what she accepted. A bottomless I was reading the uh, emanator page. Yes, that's right. But you've made one small mistake. This blade remains in its scabbard, not out of pity or scorn. It's a personal secret that I don't want to disclose, but perhaps out of reciprocity. I'll reveal the truth to you. The hunt is not the path I truly follow. May death be the end of your boundless dream. Guiding you back to the waking world. I still see them in my dreams. Hold it. Your time hasn't come yet. My time. I've seen many clever disguises that can conceal appearances. But they can never cover up who a person really is. And you're no different. You had no desire to kill the Trailblazer. You only did what you did to drive me and the Memo Keeper away, but... Why? <sighs> did Destiny's slave make you do it? You know, Elio. I thought this is just the kind of thing that'd get written into your script. My script has always been brief. Other than that, anything beyond that is unnecessary. He knows my nature. There is but a single destiny from which no one can escape. And until then, I hold the privilege of choice. However, you appear to be ignorant of this, so it's time for me to inquire. Who exactly are you? Not your enemy, perhaps. That's not what I asked. <laughs> I don't deserve your curiosity. Loners wandering the cosmos always have their secrets. Take me. I'm wanted by the IPC, so it's little wonder that I know something about the Stellaron Hunters. That's all. Maybe I can help. What reason would you have for doing that? I tend to forget things. Which is why, rather than memories, I'm accustomed to using my emotions to capture what I normally wouldn't otherwise. So... I know who is inside that cold armor. <gasps> How about it? Ready to take off that armor and sit down for a talk? It's not yet time. I don't need help, but I can give you a suggestion that would make things better for you and me. <laughs> If your goal is the Watchmaker's legacy, 
Then go look into the family. Not only are they covering up the existence of death, yeah. but they're burying the past and the truth about what happens inside the dreamscape. Already on it. And the Astral Express is no enemy of yours. I know that. I just never expected to hear you say it. What's next, then? The Trailblazer has been taken by Black Swan. Will you go look for her? No need for that. No harm in mentioning that Elio's only given me one instruction. Get all of the Astral Express to track down the Grand Legacy. I tried settling this in an easier and more direct way. But as you can see, here I am, confronting you. I failed. Can't ever go against the script. The so-called impossible is merely something that has yet to happen. That's it. Before we split, can I ask you one more thing? Is there anything else in your script about me? I'd like to know what kind of footnote I get to leave in that future foreseen by destiny. Unfortunately, not a thing came up. <laughs> I knew it. Hang on. I... No. <laughs> what? Don't. Don't what? Your first question was, do you still have dreams about everyone who died because of you? I don't. Never have. I was born without the ability to dream. I live for this cold, harsh reality. For a little light and to burn. To keep on burning until I turn to ash. So, I really envy you. Is that so? Then you're already living in the waking world. What? We heard about Miss Firefly from Black Swan, but we never expected Miss Robin to. Oh, I'm sorry. That I couldn't be with you then. Reality cruises on in serenity, while undercurrents bubble up from the dreamscape. Just like that memo keeper said. Stay strong, everyone. We can still do what we can for them. Starting with finding the murderer. Let's recap everything then. The trailblazer just reminded me of something. March. Do you remember what that family rep who negotiated with us said? Uh, indeed, we trust that the Nameless has nothing to do with this. And we also beg each of you to help assist the family in verifying the identity of the deceased. Uh, that's how it was put, in reference to Miss Firefly. Looking back, he seemed a little evasive at the time. And he also failed to mention anything about the earlier murder, too. The family's planning on covering up all news about Miss Robin's death. If news gets out, Penacony's going to turn into a bloodbath. Ow. But the murder that followed closely after was obviously beyond their anticipation. The family had to try and turn things to their advantage by bringing in reinforcements from outside. The Charmony Festival is nearly here. They must be snowed under. 
It may also be that Miss Firefly's murder had so many witnesses that it couldn't be covered up. So they went with the flow and let more people on the scene to control the situation. After all, the nature of the two murders is fundamentally different. The family's first protective measure should be against malicious actors among the guests, such as that IPC envoy. All the while accusing that galaxy ranger. Are we missing the forest for the trees here? I always felt that Aventurine's reasons for accusing Miss Acheron were highly subtle. Can we believe him? No. At this point, I'm afraid the only ones we can trust are ourselves. Look, let's try to gather intel first and then list all the possible outcomes we can. Then we go through them, eliminating contradictions one by one. The fewer facts remaining, the closer we are to the truth. I've still got this sense of foreboding. It's like we're stuck in a whirlpool, spinning around that legacy even after everything that's happened. Uh, this time we're playing the role of a real detective. But before we start, what are we going to say to the family and Aventurine? As I see things, the family harbors no ill will towards the Astral Express. If they didn't trust the crew, they wouldn't have casually commissioned outsiders to investigate a case that's, in all likelihood, a scandal. Plus, this is the family's turf. Teaming up with them should make things easier for us in the future. As for that Aventurine... Well, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Baseball bat to face. It's complex. He deliberately slow played his hand during negotiations while running circles around us all the while. He appealed convincingly to both reason and emotion. It wasn't forced, but the intent was obvious. Still, it's good to have contacts among all this uncertainty. Adventurine showed his skills, Burn the bread. as far as our interests are aligned, he can become a reliable ally. We also need to keep a certain distance from the family. Never let them get too close. Teaming up with the IPC helps balance that out. If either side makes a move, we have the option to pull out. So you suggest accepting Aventurine's proposal to team up? Yes. It's risky, but we can only wait until both sides have played their cards before making any further judgments. I get why, but there's a whole lot of bad guys and girls around here, and I'm worried about getting stabbed in the back. She's been bullied a few times now, and I can't stand it anymore. You're like a broken record. Uh, forget about it. Just let me keep an eye on him. If that doesn't work, we can just turn the tables and use him instead. Then, could you please reply to Aventurine? Everyone, take this time to put together your thoughts. <laughs> okay. The only reason I don't like this guy is he gives me money. Looks like Aventurine is happy with this outcome. Let's tell everyone about it. Aventurine's goal is to try and recapture Penacony for IPC. To do this, he'll have to bring down the family in its entirety to create a big enough chance. The existence of death will be covered up by the family. So how does he plan on taking them down? It's got to be something important enough that everyone will notice. But it also can't be anything too out in the open. 
An attack on the hotel guests? Unlikely. Pinnacone's guests include quite a few bigwigs known throughout the whole cosmos. People who not even the IPC would dare take lightly. Aventurine is a shrewd merchant, and there's no way he doesn't know that. He's definitely going for the family, and it's just a matter of how. The harmony is strong in Panacone, and almost impossible to take on head to head. The fact that the IPC dispatched Venturine shows that they do not intend to simply play by the book here. Venturine has devoted considerable attention to her, but this Galaxy Ranger, we know hardly anything about her. I can't rush to any conclusions. Hmm. I was also considering this possibility. Especially... because he respects you so much, and has sought you out before a few times. Perhaps he's also unsure of your intentions and is probing you. I'm just speculating. In any case, we have to be careful when handling Aventurine. He's skilled at reading people and discerning the right moment to strike. Also, he's clearly a born gambler if he's willing to go all in to win. Aventurine said something that concerns me. He accused that Galaxy Ranger of killing Robin without any evidence whatsoever, but said nothing about her connection to that Memory Zone meme or why he was stalking you. It was a groundless accusation, which only serves to make him seem more suspicious. Maybe Aventurine's goal was never to gain our trust. Maybe he wanted to foster a feeling of enmity towards Acheron and make the situation more volatile. Two birds, one stone. Okay. However, I asked Don Hung back on the Express to confirm that story about the Annihilation Gang and the lost messages. It wasn't something that Aventurine made up out of thin air. You've met her many times now. What's your impression of Miss Acheron? That fits the stereotype of a Galaxy Ranger to a T. They're eccentric, unpredictable, and fond of being alone. No wonder she's a suspect. It's Mark. Checked off the list. I hope it's not too soon to bring it up. But... I feel like Miss Robin isn't actually dead, but that she's still alive and well. Somewhere. That everything's just some horrible prank. Because aren't we supposed to be inside a dream? How could someone die in a beautiful dreamscape like this? Shouldn't only good things happen here? <sighs> Whenever I see the Grand Theater, I just can't stop all these thoughts from flooding my head. Yeah, of course. At times like this, we're so lucky to have our crew. The family and the IPC. Everyone has their own plans going on. Everyone's still having a great time out there on the streets. Nobody knows what's happened. It's all so unreal. As if Firefly, Miss Robin, and us... ...were all outsiders from another world. Aw, what a mess. I really want a nice cool drink of soda to help me calm down. Ah, <sighs> but... Then I'd be just like everyone else out on the streets. Uh. Hmm. 
Looks like Adventurine doesn't need anything else. Let's turn our attention to the family's assignment for now. Imako, what do you think? Among our current clues, the two murders that she witnessed are the most directly connected. I suggest starting here. I definitely like her One hair. One thing I'm curious about is Himiko. if a person dies in a dream, what happens to them in real life? Seeing as we're at the family's behest, why not pop back out to reality and verify Miss Firefly's situation back at the hotel? Perhaps we could also make a few inquiries about her while out there. How about we split off into two groups? There are still some things worth focusing on inside the dreamscape. I'll investigate those and we can link up again later. Worth focusing on? Oh. No problem. I'll leave it to you then. Uh huh? Aww. I thought I'd finally get to see Himeko and Mr. Yang go out on a mission together. Oh well. Take care then, Mr. Yang. <laughs> I will. Keep in touch. Hmm. Honored guest, uh, could you come out for a second? I'd be embarrassed too, getting stared at like that. Uh, forgive me. Uh, my name is Welt Yang. I'm one of the crew members on the Astral Express. I believe you've met my colleagues. Well. Is there something about my name? First, don't you want to know my name? Who, Miss Acheron? You're a prominent figure in Panacone. What are they saying about me? Some claim that you're the real culprit behind these murders. That the Annihilation Gang's tragic fate at the banquet was a result of your blade. <sighs> and that you're now attempting to unleash another bloodbath on Penicone. The Annihilation Gang? Ifrit of Everflame Mansion. Tragic fate. That duke turned his dying body to flames and sacrificed his life as a martyr. He was a determined and heroic path strider. Not even a villain should be disparaged like this. And what's more, there were plenty of suspects invited. Do they really think that a blade is more dangerous than that black hole you're wielding? Keen intuition. Not even the family managed to point out the truth behind this cane. So you must surely know, Miss Acheron, that peering into a black hole is not a wise move. As a potential threat, your knowledge of us has reached uncomfortable depths. Reveal your true identity and intentions. Otherwise, brace yourself for gravitational disintegration. That shouldn't be necessary. But if it makes the nameless feel less defensive, I'll be happy to abide. Believe it or not, Galaxy Ranger, Acheron, those are the names I go by to this very day. My trip to Panacone is solely to fulfill an old final request. I'm here for the Watchmaker's legacy. And that's it. I think I've been honest enough. Still unwilling to reveal your true identity? It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't. I've come so far, and I can't sum up all of that in just a few words. Everyone has their own unspeakable past. Secrets that they don't want to be revealed. And I won't be asking any more questions, such as why the Astral Express is roaming around the cosmos with a stellar on them. Is she okay? That memo keeper didn't do anything, right? She's fine. Let's just stick with the topic. Gaining my trust depends on how much you're willing to reveal. 
I've run around many different Panacone dreamscapes just to try and find that legacy. And during this period, I came into contact with quite a few guests. In the process, I gradually came to realize the secret of Panacone may be closely related to the Trailblaze. That's why I've come to ask for your help. I don't have enough proof yet, but I'd like to speculate something. The source of all tragedy lies within the family. If you could trust me, we could find the proof to support this claim together. Mr. Yang, I think you've come to the same conclusion, haven't you? Let's leave it at that. For now, I'll choose to believe that you bear no hostility. Share your findings with me and me alone. I don't want vague conjecture to interfere with other people's judgments before we find solid proof. Mm-hmm. By the way, would you like something to drink? Before we go, how about two cups of wake the heck up? No, four cups. Because the conversation coming up will last forever. I've been watching her closely for a while now, and the first invitation was in the banquet hall of the hotel. She just sat in one corner, keeping silent, chugging down a couple cups of wake the heck up. I told her it's a pungent, bitter beverage, not the taste of sweet dreams, only for people allergic to soul glad. And she said, Really? But I don't taste. Any difference at all between them? The guest rooms are charmingly minimalist. An aesthetic you share, Miss Acheron. It's a cinch, this music box. The invitation received by the Annihilation Gang. There are latent memories that linger on it yet. You see, memories of you are not yours alone. They travel in other people, other things. I know much, and I can predict even more. With some help, the dead can be made to speak. The Annihilation Gang, that band of desperados who all disappeared after meeting you, what exactly happened to them? Well, let me reveal all. Gradation 12. Dreamscape 12. Father, I dedicate this to you. Well done, Dubra. Wherever they go, shall be met by annihilation. There it is. It's hazy, but it's Ifrit's voice. The other one is probably his progeny. This is the residual memory from when the invitation was first delivered. They were abruptly interrupted. Then, what happened next is... They sought refuge in the land of sleep. Merely wishing for undisturbed rest, away from the storms. Children of the flame, this marks your rite of passage. She won't be necessary. I alone am enough. When have the path of destruction, fear death. The Everflame Mansion has set out on a journey. Those poor people, they have no idea what lies in wait ahead of them. Memory recovery is going well, but slowly. She'll be here soon, and time is short. 
There's nobody else here, so there's no need to be delicate. In fact, I think I'd better go all out. <gasps> what happened? Is blank. How is that possible? This music box fell into Acheron's hands, and she brought it to Panacone. That's a fact, and that's how it should have gone. But along the way... It's like it's been erased. Who's done this? Who are you? Who are you? It's... No. Is this not a memory? Oh, a memo keeper. Do you serve the Garden of Recollection? Or the Cremators? My name is Constance. A pleasure to meet you. We were supposed to meet in Pentagoni and send it... <laughs> Unforgettable time together. Ah, no! But that seems unrealistic. Dolly is not welcome on the banquet star, and I don't need a coming-of-age ceremony. And you... I know what you're looking for. Want her secret? I can give it to you, and then... You can enjoy the banquet for me. I wish you... Unforgettable memories. Oh, hmm. a phone. Want to listen in? Yeah. <laughs> a few days ago. The IPC made an announcement. Under the watchful guidance of the Marketing Development Department and in accordance with the Interstellar Peace Charter, the independent Sigonian sovereignty has hereby been established and shall take a legislative seat at the Interstellar Congress. The formation of the Sigonian sovereignty is of great historical significance to the Sigonia system. This move puts an end to the planet's long and bloody history, turning the sensational Katika Abjin extinction event into a distant memory. Sigonia 4 is located in an unclaimed zone at the intersection of the Denise, Pruthian, and Dorno star clusters. The planet's surface environment is known for being extremely harsh, constantly faced with the threat of impact from small scale celestial objects. This is why very few intelligent species have made this planet their home, dividing themselves into several tribes to eke out nomad lifestyles as they struggle to survive the arid desert wilderness. They have developed their own folk beliefs that are independent of the Eon belief system. Sigonia. Sigonia. Ravenous eye of the storm. Burned by all the gods. Land of rock, but not water. Lightning, but not rain. Blood, but not tears. You beat us with your falling stars. You lash us with wind and storm. You chew us up with the cracked earth. You promised us a land of honey, yet yoked us beneath a sword of bitterness. Oh, Gyathra Triclops, if thou can hear me, please open up thy three eyes and gaze upon this child. When you took his father, my child, was still sleeping in my belly. And where my husband went, I too soon must go. 
I don't ask for a peaceful death. Just for you to tell me. Does the baby swaddled sweetly asleep? Does he dream of his mother's heartbeat and the sound of falling rain? Please tell me whether this life is all just a fleeting dream. Otherwise, why would this child be born to face impending death? Mommy! 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 The rain! It's raining! Raining? <gasps> raining! <laughs> it is raining! It's true! The soldiers weren't lying to us! They really did summon the rain. Mommy, we can leave here. We can go back home. Back home. Oh. Gyathra Triclons. <laughs> you came. <laughs> Do you hear that? <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Darling, listen. This is the sound of rain. <laughs> On the day you were born, the sky also sent down a gift like this from Gayatra. <laughs> Such a lucky child. Such a blessed child. Just like your name. A gift from them to Avgen. <gasps> My boy. May the goddess Gayathra close her eyes three times. Keep your blood eternally pulsing. Let your journey be forever peaceful and your schemes forever concealed. <gasps> Welcome to this sad world, Kakavasha. <sighs> Time to wake up, gambler. <laughs> oh, heavens. <laughs> uh, I must have drunk too much soul glad. Uh, didn't expect you to be back so soon. How is it? Find anything? Just as you guessed. Nobody outside knows about Robin's death. There aren't even baseless conspiracy theories. They are still streaming the rehearsal for her ceremony. Using a stand-in, I guess. <laughs> they must be dreaming. Of course. <laughs> Who could imagine that death would actually descend upon the idyllic dream created by the family? Let alone that the victim would be the female lead of the Charmony Festival. To be honest with you, I didn't believe it. I even tested it a few times myself. Until I discovered that I couldn't actually die. <laughs> Whenever there's any danger, I'm forced awake by the dream pool and it's all as if everything were just a nightmare. That's why I'm convinced that there are a few big secrets lurking behind the scenes. Then you must have heard about the Memory Zone meme. When I graciously deigned to establish connections with the Oak family on your behalf, they were quite in a pitiful state of disarray. Besides Robin, there was... another body. I don't know the exact details, just that it was... a stowaway. Two murder cases? <laughs> I told you something seemed off about the Nameless. Oh, she must have come across the other one. <laughs> this murderer is a psycho. But I have to admit, the case should be easy to crack. We can leverage the family's malfeasance and let the IPC use this as a reason to intervene. Uh, it's just that their trickery runs deeper than I thought. Robin's stand-in was all ready to go. 
These two murders are definitely getting hushed up. Uh, what should we do? Let me think. It's too rare an opportunity to miss out on, so... I gotta be careful. Incredible gambler. Have you already exhausted your limited repertoire of tricks so soon? Oh, there are plenty of chips, but it'd be best to choose carefully. The most straightforward has to be Robin. Remember? That masked fool once told me to find a mute as a friend. Robin is what she calls the mute. She has lost her voice, and while most people can't pick up on it, you and I cannot mistake that sound. Not produced by any voice box, but rather by the resonance of the harmony. If that girl hadn't gone hoarse from singing practice, there'd only be one possibility. Something was up with the family. Or Robin herself. To get to the bottom of this, I tried every way I could to meet her. But she died. Right before my very eyes. A complete and utter loss. Incidentally, it seems to have resulted in your rather undignified arrival on the interrogation stand. There were eyewitnesses at the scene, and the family, in their graciousness, has tentatively accepted your alibi. However, for the foreseeable future, you shall, regrettably, find yourself under the vigilant watch of the Hounds. Well, things aren't looking too optimistic, Doctor. I'm starting to break out in a cold sweat. D do you reckon... there's still any chance of a comeback, given how things are? A probability? Yes, it exists, but it verges on the infinitesimal. To phrase it in a manner more befitting the vernacular of Penacony, you're dreaming. But if you simply can't control yourself and want to try your hand, then there just so happens to be a suitable candidate. That man wants to see you again. Who? Oh. Sunday. <sighs> Is this a public hearing or a private trial? If it were the former, it would hardly befit my stature to stoop to the role of a mere messenger. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> well, that's great. It's all great. You see, the dead can't talk, but the living can. Ratio, I'm convinced now that there must be something wrong inside the family. Oh, just you wait and see. That man's sister has died. He can't sit on his hands. Well, without any further ado, let's set off. Lead the way. The show is about to begin. Are you out about? Okay, good. We're here. The Dula Fortress. <laughs> this mansion normally belongs to the Sunday. Doc, whose side are you? Who's to say I won't? <laughs> we'll see. When we follow me, and I'll bring you to him. Hmm. progress, other points of view, base Atlas. I don't care. Here right now. Hey, you two! That's. I was requested. Oh, I remember you. Excuse me? Uh, the one on your head. Of course. Right, and. At... That's because you can't see it. Like I say. <sighs> it's seen. A dead end? The door is shut tight. I mean, there isn't a door. For security reasons. The family built the admin on the previous occasion. An attendant named... Maybe we should do the same. 